Today, we're visiting the New Britain Museum of American Art in New Britain, Connecticut. The museum had its start in 1853 as an institute whose purpose was to foster learning by recent immigrants to the area. In 1903, it began to acquire paintings and it slowly morphed into the art museum that it is today, concentrating on American art from drawings, paintings, prints, photographs, and sculptures from all eras of American history from 1739 to the present. The museum sits next to Walnut Hill Park, which you see below, a 98-acre park near downtown New Britain that was designed by the great landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted uh, and was completed in 1870. He also designed Central Park and a lot of other parks around the country. Thanks to a major expansion in 2006, the museum has become one of the largest art museums in New England. It has a wonderful collection of over 8,300 works of art. The museum also has a phenomenal collection of over 1,700 illustrations and is the first American museum-based collection that covers the history of illustration from the 19th century up until today. When you visit the museum, you should also give yourself time to walk around the park. Both in the park and on the museum grounds around the museum, they have installed some interesting sculptures that you might like to walk through. Well, here we are at the museum entrance on Lexington Street. Just near the entrance in the inside is a small cafe uh, with sandwiches, pastries, and dishes. And here there's also a gift shop that carries a wide selection of books, as you can see, jewelry, pictures, and other gift choices that will strike you fancy. As we enter the galleries, we are greeted by a friendly, alert security guard <laughs> by the name of Sil Sejan. <laughs> He's there pretty often. Uh, essentially, the museum layout is such that the bottom floor is dedicated to a rotating selection from the permanent collection. Well, some are rotating. And the top floor is reserved for temporary exhibits. And here in the first hallway, they actually show a selection of the museum's a collection of illustrations as well as some statuary. In this lecture hall that's off this first hallway, the museum is now showing a large painting that memorializes the agony of the attack on the World Trade Center on 9-11. I'll let you figure out the symbolism on this painting here, but it is pretty dramatic. The main galleries seem to be organized according to eras and types of painting. The first paintings we meet are from the 18th and 19th centuries, including portraits and landscapes. Then we see more lit landscapes later on. I like that little, uh, little bench. Uh, some by members of the Hudson River School of Painting. And this one here, for example, is a painting by Bierstadt, Seals on the Rocks. And then we have this great little painting by Maxfield Parrish. Here we'll take a quick walk through these works from the permanent collection. An interesting thing that I notice is that American art was always influenced by European art, by the whole European art world. Um, and many American artists like Sargent, Whistler, Morris, and Cassatt, for example, traveled to Europe to study painting. But Americans, while influenced by Europe, often developed their own schools, like the Hudson River School, or art colonies around the country, many of which were heavily influenced by Impressionism and later art movements. But you can see in these works that American paintings developed their own styles of painting. Seeing these works together in one museum reinforces the movement and development of American art. It's great to see American painters as different as Sargent, Whistler, Frederick Church, Alfred Bierstadt, and Maxfield Parrish, and Thomas Harn Benton being shown together. Here you have two paintings that appear to be almost identical. And the funny thing about it is that one is a fraudulent copy of the original and which had been bought for a handsome sum. When the second painting was discovered, experts had to be brought in to decide which painting was the original. But you'll have to visit the museum if you want to find out which is the original. I'm not telling. However, a few years ago when the museum first put these paintings on the wall, they had you guess which was the original. I have to admit that I guessed wrong. And then we come to a room where they are showing a series of gorgeous murals by Thomas Hart Benton. Benton is known for his murals whose subject matter can best be described as Americana, 
or American history, say on a personal note. I can't remember where these paintings were first installed, but you can still see his works in state capitol buildings and other public buildings around the country. Always great visuals. Here now we'll just swing through some other rooms. Again, this is all uh, American paintings, American sculptures and so forth. Uh, there's a lot to talk about each one of these, the beautiful paintings by all kinds. Of, well, there's a Rockwell Kent right there now. That's a gorgeous painting. Um, a lot of these others are by well-known painters. Uh, anybody who knows anything about American paintings will recognize a lot of these painters. If you don't know very much about uh, art or American art, these are just gorgeous paintings to just come and look at and study and get an idea of what you're looking at. I mean, just really phenomenal stuff. And here we have a, a room of shaker furniture, which is really great. If you have an idea, any idea what shaker furniture is, um, this is actually a very nice collection. And they change this over once in a while. They, I guess, I guess they have quite a collection of shaker furniture. So it's um, just a room that you can pass through and look at the stuff. And I just had to show this illustration. I love it. Okay, now we'll go upstairs to see the current exhibitions. The museum always has an exhibit of art on the walls or on the landing that you can enjoy as you walk up the stairs. There are a couple of exhibits on the second floor that I haven't seen yet. I think they started up. Unfortunately, uh, I took this video in June, and I believe they have made changes to the exhibits in the meantime. I think they have two new exhibits coming up. Uh, that are actually installed now. Uh, appears that one of them is of New Britain art and artists, and the other is a new permanent collection installation of works by Walter Wick. So unfortunately, it looks like you will not be able to see this little work of art, since I guess it's uh, that exhibit is gone. As well as these others, I think these were actually done by women artists. Uh, I think both exhibits were done by women at the time. So that's another reason to get a membership at the museum. So you can go to this museum, you can go to other museums uh, for free if they're part of the uh, North American Reciprocal Museum Association. Uh, and other museums in Connecticut are, so it's a very good thing to have here. Um, but again, they change exhibits all the time here at the uh, New Britain Museum, so it's a good to have. The, uh, if you want to look at the art, it's good to have the membership so you come well, whenever you feel like it, you know, and you want to come at least a few times a year. This exhibit in this room is by Jennifer Wen Ma, entitled An Inward Sea. This is part of the museum's new now exhi exhibition series that features emerging and established artists. Wen Ma explores themes of utopia, dystopia, and the human condition, etc. Uh, pretty interesting. There's a sound to it, but I really couldn't make out what the people were saying in there. But it was kind of, you know, to watch it back and forth, it's kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure what it all means, etc. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this little excursion into the complex matrix of the so-called real world. If you have, then please subscribe and hit that little notification bell to make sure you don't miss my future videos. Thank you, and live well until we meet again.